Well, good afternoon. Now, just before this video starts, I've got an apology to make. In the next few weeks, there's not going to be many videos coming out because I've had a bad ankle injury. I'll put you a picture of what it looks like. Now, it's very painful and I can't get out. I didn't get to any of the player and matches, unfortunately. But there you go. But anyway, enjoy this video and don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. Cheers for now. Well, good afternoon. It's me again. Still at Rob Andrews. We're a few, like I said, there's a few videos of his uncovery tank that's special. You see there, Alex Chalmers crawler. Well, we've got two more. We've got this crawler and another crawler to do on this videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe, as we've always said. And uh, let's get on with this video, shall we? Cheers for now. We got Rob. So that is um, like the other one in your video. There, that's another Alice Chalmers M. Um, this is a, a bought machine. Um, it's not a, uh, a, a lend lease, but it was bought after the war. Before okay. the war, um, this and we only found this out. And one of my friends pointed it out to me. This is actually a, a, a wartime um, army one. Um, oh, okay. Some very subtle differences in it, which. Uh, so he, he's an Alice Chalmers man, so I, he recognises things that I don't. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so this is a 1941, um, and it went into private ownership um, after after the war, after the army were finished with it, it was sold off. Mm -hmm. So originally it would have been green, with a star on the side. Um, it's had a slightly different seat box put on it, because um, they were wider for the military ones. But one of the giveaways is these grousers. Um, and these grousers with the holes, uh, which is one of the things he saw in the in, in the photographs mm -hmm. um, are snow grouses. So this was a uh, worked in somewhere where it was a cold climate. As to where that is, I don't know, but um, it allows the snow which gets into the tracks to not be compacted into them, and for the sprocket at the back to push the snow through. Ah, okay. um, snow's worse than um, stones mm. um, getting in there. Stones will get crushed and ground up, whereas snow packs. Um, and, it, and it doesn't move and it can pull a track chain off it can do some serious damage oh, so these are snow grouses um, now this one's in in the restoring stage isn't it you you've got the part of the gearbox off haven't you the it is the yeah gearbox. so you've got the so when i bought this it does run um and it does drive mm. um but it, one of the steering clutches like what was wrong with the other one is seized up so that means i've got to take all that steering mechanism out on one side yeah um and the, the split the steering clutch out and then go through it in that in that way mm. um to make it steer again so it's, you can see i've got the top cover off at the moment mm. um, there's a broken piece in there because where it got seized up someone's pulled on the lever and it's gone snap and it snapped it so mm. so when you re finish restoring it mm -hmm. Is it going to be green or is it going to be orange? Back to army spec this back one. Back to army so spec, be, with the proper yeah. star on the back and everything. That's yep. it, yep, with, with the star on the back, um, on the side here. Um, yep. Yeah, and I'll, I'll should try and put it back to looking like, well it'd be this colour, you know, same colour as Which the, is the, the drab. Yeah, the green, olive drab, it? yeah, from the uh, an American army olive drab. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what colour it would be. What Rob's talking about is this uh, army trader right next door to us. Another one of his uh, fine machines. I love that big wheel on the front of that one, Rob. That's a, that's a proper yeah, big cast iron wheel. Yeah. You don't anyway, see him with that, but yeah. let's let's go back to the other. Now it's petrol, obviously. Yeah. So it's petrol, um, petrol straight start, petrol. Um, yeah, straight petrol to start it. Yeah. And then it's um, once it's up and running, you switch it over onto kerosene, like all American stuff. Yeah. Um, of the year. Oh, kerosene. Yeah. yeah. It runs on kerosene, not TVO. Um, yeah. So what's the difference between I mean to the layman, kerosene and TVO then? Well, kerosene is a um, is is the base product. That's so uh, 30, 38 second, sorry, twenty eight second heating oil. Yeah. Um, same stuff as you burn in like burning the house to to um, like for the oil boiler there. Yeah. Um, TVO is a distiller of that. So what they did was they took kerosene and they took some of the I don't know how to say it really. Uh, uh, some of the um, uh, components out of um, the kerosene. Yep. Um, to make a slightly cleaner burning fuel for our our tractors. Oh, okay. Um, so things like that Fordson that we were filming 
um, in the pre previous films. That runs on, on tractor vaporising or TVO. Mm. Um, and you've promised to give me your ingredients for that, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, you, you mix it. Uh, you have to mix it yourself now if you, you, you know, it's, um, know what you're doing with it. And I yeah. share that with you, um, how I make it. Fantastic. Um, but, and what I've seen of your plant that runs on it, it runs very well on it. Now, it's a four-cylinder job, isn't it? Yeah, four-cylinder spark ignition. Spark so ignition. Magnetos around this side. Oh, Meg. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's where... Oops. Oops. And that's where you got everything in pieces. It? That's it, yeah. So I'll start to strip out and so I know what parts I need. Um, yeah. The steering clutch itself won't need any parts. It just... Um, it just gets uh, um, rusty together so it doesn't slip the discs inside. It's multi-plate dry clutch for the... Uh, unfortunately steering. for you, or unfortunately, you've got this disease in collecting. Now, Obviously, you've got stuff that's been under a sheet for a long time. You've not got around to doing it. Yeah. But I'm sure you will one day, and uh, it's nice to have it anyway, isn't it? Yes, so, it is, yeah. in your collection, that's a fantastic hook on the front. Here. What's that hook for? To just, pull things or something? Yeah, just a recovery hook, or you can, yeah, you can pull, oh, pull okay. it out if it's getting stuck, or, um, yeah, so. Uh, but a war, a war stripped one, which was part of the Lent Lease, um, which is my, like my other one, part of the things they um, took removed. off. Removed for saving of weight was the hook oh, okay. this grill at the front here the protection oh grill, yeah 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 the wings, side panels yeah, yeah the wings down the side they took those bits off yeah um, and this one's got electric start one of the oh, specifications it? for the military spec one oh, yeah yeah because they have to start it straight away if something's coming across yeah it's going to kill them yeah they want to get it out of the way didn't they yeah back in the day this one um, also originally had an oil diluter because it's de designed for cold climates and yeah um, and snow it had a, what's called an oil diluter and it actually took a bleed of the kerosene out and put it into the oil um, oh, okay. to keep the oil thin so you could actually turn it turn it over um, and it would actually start back up again and it's a funny um, mechanism it's unfortunately it's all missing off of this but it's a it's a uh, metering device which has a timer on it for how much um, of it you want to go through mm. um, and then the quantity of the oil to go mm. the kerosene oil to go into the sump to keep mm. it uh, the oil thin enough for it to um, to be able to be started up and, mm. and keep it oh that's great now i'm gonna see it's always been used because you've still got the rem rem remnants of the mud and everything where you've been uh, crawl, crawl running it about, driving well, yeah, it about. When we was moving it, yes, um, yeah, it's still got those, the, the remnants of it. But um, yeah. I've, I only ever drove it to sort of this position because um, it only drives in a straight line or turns right. Oh, okay. so you can spin around in a big circle if you want, and then, then go off in, in, in a different <laughs> oh, yeah. direction. So, apart from that, it does drive. But yeah, it's, it's just quite a lot of heavy engineering to get the uh, final drive to pieces where the clutch is. Well, I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. So please invite me back when you've More restored it. And we'll have a look at it. And we, what we do, we move on to your other Alex Chalmers now. Yes, the bigger one. The bigger one, which yeah. is restored, and it's, it, unfortunately it's in the back of a shed. But it we're going to clamber over to get near it, and you can tell us all about that then. Not a problem. Cheers, Rob. Right, Rob, we're with your big Alex Chalmers now. Is that the right saying, Alex Chalmers? Yeah. We're not going to ask you to get it out, because we can see it's in a barn, and you've got a finger bar mower. That's right, yeah. So you've got a Banford finger bar mower there, which we use. Let's um, just get a picture of that. Do you use that at all, Rob? Yeah, we do. Yeah. I always fancy them, I think they look quite nice, and I like things you can actually use and do something. Yeah, with. why not? Um, why not? So I bought uh, bought that one, it cost me 100 quid. No, really? I got it for 100 quid, um, and then it took me about two days to straighten the thing, the actual knife out, which took the most work, getting that back into shape yep. so it cuts properly. Um, a, you know, a good work around and a straighten out, not to make a few bits for it, but um, it works perfectly. And so it's driven by its own gearbox, isn't it? That's it, yeah. So you, it's um, not the horse drawn version, so that, that is identical, but all the controls come out the back of it where you mm. sit in and you've got the horse up in front. With this one, all the controls are at the front, so you can reach it from a, uh, from a tractor. Yeah. So you've got all the handles and everything, you just reach backwards and you can. Oh, so the top handle's for. that The one with the ring pull in it, that brings it out of work, so that lifts it up. Right. And the one to, to put it back down into work is that handle there, oh, the okay. side bar. So you flip that up and it drops it into work. Oh, okay. um, and it also, this one's equipped with automatic lift, so that's why it's got that ring pull. Oh, I'd love to try that out on my yeah, field. Yeah. Just so it'll, it'll cut grass, you know, as well as it will do hay, you just take the soft board off of it. Um, and I mow the field with it sometimes on the girls' See, out. I could do with that, like, because where my ditches run around my field, yeah. you could cut over the ditch, whereas I can obviously take my nine foot 
uh, topper mm. alongside the ditch. I couldn't sort of stick it over because I'd be in the ditch with it, like yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Whereas that sticks out, what, four foot? Yeah, four, yeah, I think it's about four and a bit foot, yeah. yeah. So it, it sticks out, but stays level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you've got the swath board on there for doing hay, so it rows it all up for you. Oh. Um, yeah, one of the old, I mean, that's 1940s, that is. Well, sadly, we're coming to the end of the videos with you, but we've got this one that we've kept to the end anyway, yeah. which is unbelievable. Now, tell us a little bit about this then, Rob. So this is, uh, yeah, so unfortunately, I'd like to get it out for you, but we've got too much in here, but this is a 1938 Alice Chalmers Inn, um, one of 12 that I think were bought into the country back in the day. This one was actually bought, it's not a Len Lease tractor. Uh, it's got the old um, badge from the selling um, Trader, H. A. Collins, so Biggles Wade, oh. um, and that's who that's who sold it back in the day in 1938. So I'll get the uh, oh yeah look, that's, right, perfect. There you go, you've helped me out again. That's right, Rob. You're welcome. Fantastic. That uh, engine wise. So this is uh, it's basically just a big scale up version of the one you just looked at, the, the M. Um, the engine on this, uh, petrol start kerosene engine, 9 litre, 4 cylinder, I think it's about 30, uh, 42 or 46 horsepower, I can't remember it off the top of my head. It seems um, a, a big tractor is a 46 horsepower, when yeah. you think of your 35, mm. you know, and then you look at this and you think, oh, it's got to be old round with horsepower, isn't it? Yeah, but no, it's a very big engine, very long stroke, very um, very torquey engine. It, yeah. Maximum revs is 1,200 RPM. Yeah, but big cylinders, um, big pistons, yeah. so loads of torque. Masses, masses you know. of torque, yeah. It, it, it pulls very, very well. You've got the wide tracks and it's a wide model as well, so it's got a bit of presence and a bit of grip to it. Yeah. Now, you tell me, none of your crawlers that you've got to add blades on them in the front, do they? They're no. They're strictly a pudding tractor. They are a tractor, yeah. They're not a dozer. They never were. A, 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 a dozer, there are literally just uh, tracked tractors for pulling just from the back end, like that. And would they use them for pulling trees down or something like that? You could do, yeah, you could, you, you could use it for that, um, but mainly it's just a bigger version, and you could pull behind that a um, it's something like a five or six furrow plow quite happily, yeah, you know, uh, a version of the one you saw just a minute ago, the ransoms they did them bigger, the plows. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what it's for. Now maintenance wise, we've spoke about other things with maintenance wise, and does it take a lot of maintenance or does it, I mean like, since, like all good old machinery, it always drips oil doesn't it? So, yeah it does, yeah, if it stands for a while then the the, the, the oil seals on this are the old leather type um, yeah. oil seals oh, okay. they are, so if it doesn't do anything they don't get lubricated, the leather can dry out so it's good to, yeah. get, even if you just give it a run and less work it, it uh, gets the oil around everything. Um, but it's very, very reliable. This is electric start. Oh, all right, so there's none of that cranking it or anything like that. I have started it once with the crank handle, but it's almost a two foot handle, and if it snaps back at you, that's a that's an arm breaker. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got electric start, um, straight exhaust pipe. Did they come with an electric start? Uh, this did. Um, I don't know whether you could buy it with uh, without the electric You probably could do. Um, Being American, it probably had electric start on to yeah, start with, you know. Yeah, most of their stuff did. It's when it came over here, they, they often didn't have the electric start. No, that's right. But luckily, this one has, and it's uh, it, a very reliable machine. My youngest and uh, my eldest daughter, you know, they they, um, they they like driving. It's quite light on the controls as well for a big machine. It's actually mm. slightly easier to drive than the little ones. Really? Does your daughters mm. have drove it before? Yeah, then? yeah, yeah. It's my, my youngest, India. It's her favourite tractor. She's yeah, really? she, uh, she loves this thing. Well, I'm gonna ask. The, I'm gonna slip past you because I'm mm. gonna get the, the few from the front. So uh, yeah, can I'm we gonna, come this way, yeah. Rob? Got it. Fantastic. Because yeah. it is quite a tight area. Can we get in? Now I'm gonna ask. I've got to work out how this gimbal light works on this someday, but let's see if we can get both lights on it. A big old lamp, isn't it, really? It Oops. is. It is. Yeah, and that's the starter motor, I presume? That's the, that's the dynamo. So that's it's, the dynamo. It's, it's a gear driven dynamo. Oh, okay, um, so no belts. Oh, we've got belts on obviously on the water pump, have we? That's it, yeah, you've got the belt on the water pump, um, which drives down, uh, it's a twin belt. Uh, and the fan, and yeah. then you've got uh, yeah, it's like the uh, dynamo there. Um, it's 12 volt, and the starter mode is down there. Okay. Um, and if you look up underneath, I don't know if you can see it, but there's the cylinder heads, and you can see the spark plugs. Oh. So you've got the spark plugs up in there. It's two cylinder heads, so you've got one common block, 
Uh, right. But you've got independent independent um, cylinder heads. So you've got this is a cylinder head here, and you've got another one there. So oh, two, yeah. So you can two. Yeah, you can take one off. Yeah. But the well, the reason they did that is for expansion and contraction. So one long head doesn't mm -hmm. always uh, warm up. Uh, oh. It will stretch, and um, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, to, to cut that down and, and bust in head gaskets with it expanding and contracting okay. back in the old way of doing yeah, it's it. Only got a small, to me, it only looks like it's only got a small radiator on it. I mean, considering mm. the size of that lamp there, you'd think it'd have a bit more of a mm. lamp on it, but... Yeah, it's got a big uh, big radiator. It does pull a lot of air through. Um, yeah. You can't see it, but it's got a rad blind on the front. Oh, okay. And that's how you regulate the temperature. But this one um, has a temperature gauge, which you can see how hot you're running the engine. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, Fantastic. unusual that the HT leads for the go part. through the center. Yeah, of the and, the mag yeah. and the magnetos on the other side, but it has yeah. this little dedicated hole for the yeah, leads I've, to come through. I did notice it. Now, that obviously, mm. you've got three or four tops on the top, haven't you? So yeah, so up here, um, on, it's just you probably don't need, your, don't need your lights on there. No. So up here, we've got what? So uh, that's your starting tank. So that has petrol in it. Yeah, and then that's your main fuel tank, which is underneath here. Um, that takes kerosene and then this is the dipstick for the kerosene tank because oh. you can't see into it because there's a big filter in there so you take that off and there's a big dipstick with oh. marks on it to tell you how much fuel's in there okay well again I, I, I thank you for showing me your, your equipment Rob and uh, we'll certainly have these videos out eventually you know because there's just a few of them isn't it Rob so yeah, you, now, yeah. you know we got through a few but um, thank you again you're and, welcome. Uh, we'll see you probably sometime when you've got something new, which won't be long knowing you. Yeah, or running something up and you'll come over and have a look at it. That'd be great. Yeah. Anyway, Rob, like I say, thanks ever so much. You're and, welcome. Uh, you've seen most of his videos now, and obviously I bored you to tears with me talking to Rob, but such full of knowledge and such a lovely collection of equipment. And uh, don't forget to give the collection a like for me. I would appreciate it. And uh, like I said before, you don't have to subscribe, but it'd be it'd make the channel better for everyone to see. And seeing all this old iron, as I call it, old iron, nuts and bolts working, it's a delight for anybody. Anyway, enough of me gabbling on. Cheers for now. Mm -hmm.